Welcome to Conscious Evolution Media Television, uh, coming to you live from our Denver, Colorado studios. We are sh sh right now live on uh, Comcast Channel 56 and also streaming live on ConsciousEvolutionMedia.com. I'm your host and moderator, Coach Steve Toth, and our theme today is uh, one of my favorite subjects, conflict resolution and helping you soar to new heights, not just uh, in your business, but also personally. And let me introduce you our guest today. Her name is Sherry Ray. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Sherry. Steve. And she's, she's of course, specializes in conflict resolution. But in addition to that, she's an author. Mm -hmm. And uh, you also, I think, do a lot of um, speaking engagements, right? I do. All over, the, all over the country, all over the world. Yes. You know? And uh, you're also a life coach. I am. You're a busy lady. Always busy, but I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. So the thing that I love about you the most, um, well, I don't know because I don't really know you yet, but I'll tell you at the end of the show what's the most that I love about you. But based on what I know today, right now, what I love about you is you've been racing. I have. And that's just, to me, is so awesome. Tell us a little bit about that. Like for me, for somebody to race, you have to somehow master fear. Is that accurate? You learn that you can scream in your helmet and nobody can hear you and then you're good. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you do that? I raced for 12 years. I raced uh, cars wow. for 12 years. Yeah. And what kind of cars did you race? A 65 Corvette and a Lola Formula Ford, which is like a little Indy car. And when was the last time you did that? Probably 2001. Wow. That's, that's fantastic. So um, I'm, I'm just so interested in conflict resolution, uh, and the reason why I am so interested is because I feel that conflicts are arising moment to moment everywhere, at work, at home, and in your experience, how people usually handle conflict? It's either the fight or flight. <laughs> it really is. Uh, they're either running and hiding and saying, uh -huh. I'm not going to deal with this at all. Uh -huh or they're ready to get in someone's face. And I think we've all had those experiences. Yeah. Yeah, I used to have a partner, as, I, as I'm now in touch with this, that uh, there were five partners in the business. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, every time we had any kind of a conflict, he got up and left. Wow. That's tough because you don't know what, you don't even yeah. know what he thinks the conflict is. Yeah, and he ended up actually leaving and going to work for one of our biggest clients. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Yes. So what happens when people stay in the conflict and actually get into each other's face? What's your experience? How successful is that? It really doesn't work because mm -hmm. <clears throat> when you're angry, you're, you're getting back exactly what you're giving that person, and there's no resolution. There's just anger against anger or fear against fear, and no true communication is happening, and you're saying things you wish you hadn't said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I yeah. agree. So since, since we are a Conscious Evolution Media TV show and a network, I, I am curious, in, in your opinion, what, what is consciousness has to do with conflict and conflict resolution? Well, I think when you consciously stop and say, what's really going on here? Just to take that moment and say, is this about me? Is this about them? Do I even know what this is about? Instead of reacting immediately, which we tend to do, and I think that when our values get stepped on, we typically will go off. Uh, it's just like a hot button. Yeah, and everybody has some of those hot buttons, right? Uh, absolutely, and I'm certainly mm. one of them. <laughs> but it's how you clean it up that uh -huh. matters. <laughs> uh -huh. So, so in, in your experience, um, do you think that most partners, and I'm talking about partners that are married or just living together, or I'm even talking about at work, mm -hmm. Do they know, are they aware of what their buttons are, each, other, each other's buttons? I think, I think partners are. Mm -hmm. And depending on how long they've been together, they know how to do the dance. Mm -hmm. But we certainly are all, we're always going to have blow-ups. It just happens. And it is knowing how to consciously deal with it in a different way than you ever have before. It, doesn't, it never has to be a blow-up. It's about staying curious. Right. So let's talk about, you developed a, a process, right? Yes. How you help um, your clients, and that's corporate clients as well as, um, you know, just an individual you can help. Let's, let's walk the viewers through this process. What, sure. does, it, what does it look like? It's really, like? first of all, stop. Mm -hmm. Just stop. 
And then look, is this, again, is this about me? Is this about them? What's really going on? Do I even know what's going on? Or did I just hear something and jump? Um, then you want to start asking questions. Hmm. Tell me more about that. Uh, what's happening here? What did you mean by that? Tell me more. Help me understand. Mm -hmm. And so you, you stopped, you've looked, you questioned, then you listen. And you have to be willing to actually hear what they have to say. Wow. Okay, good. So let's just step back for a second. I, a lot of times I experience people not using I statements. Mm -hmm. They actually point. You know, I know that when somebody starts pointing at me, mm -hmm. there's trouble. Right. And then what choice do I have at that, at that moment? When they're basically saying, you are making me feel blah, blah, blah. I just turn into the curious two-year-old and say, please tell me more. Tell me more about why you're feeling that way. You can become the sumo wrestler mm -hmm. with the words bouncing off your chest right back at them. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so exciting when you can finally not take it personally because uh -huh. it's usually not about you. Yes. It is rarely about That's you. Very good, it's yeah. about what their perception is. Yeah. And it's something that triggered in them a past experience, you know, whatever that is, or things they've been holding on to, but it's their stuff. Mm -hmm. And when you realize it's not about you, you can just let those words bounce right back at them and say, help me understand, tell me more, why do you feel that way? And continue to stay curious, which helps you be able to get grounded mm -hmm. and decide, okay, what am I doing now? Mm -hmm. But usually your questions help them realize where they went yeah, very and good. Think, think through what's really going on. So you also mentioned listening. I, I feel that listening is an art form uh, because, and, and I think I read something on, on your website about <clears throat> reading back what you just heard. Mm -hmm. and. That is just so absolutely valuable because my experience of a lot of people, and I used to be this way, this is how I know mm -hmm. and how I can use, use this information, right. is that I, I used to be the kind of person that I had a, a whole bunch of stuff going on in my head. The critic, um, my higher self mm -hmm. that wants the best for me, and so I had those two going on. And I had all this other stuff going on about what's the next question I'm going to ask you? Oh, sure. Um, what am I going to have to do after this show? Yeah. <laughs> what am I going to do? I didn't do my laundry. <laughs> my and, iron's and I'm plugged doing, in. <laughs> and I'm doing all of this while you're talking to me. That is horrible. It so is such a disservice. Of, how much, yeah. <laughs> how much of what you just told me am I going to he really hear? What, what do you think the percentage is? Not much. Not much. And, and one of the exercises I do with people is I have them sit. Uh, they go off in pairs, sit knee to knee, and I say, I want one person to talk for one minute, and the other person cannot say a word. Mm -hmm. Drives them crazy. Yeah. And then they trade places. I said, if you can truly be present mm -hmm. and not thinking about what your next question is or what am I going to do after this, the biggest gift you can give someone is to be present. And it's hard in this multitasking wor world to do that. Yes. But the gift of what you learn from that is absolutely amazing. Yeah, and I don't know if you're noticing, but I'm even leaning a little bit forward mm -hmm. towards you mm -hmm. because what I'm doing right now is I, I want to be over there. You know, I, I want to really get you. Mm -hmm. And how I do that is I don't have any conversation. Like, I ha there's no questions on here. Right. You know, I'm generating... Uh, this show and this conversation with you as we're doing it in the present moment, which is, which is really the foundation of consciousness. And I'm, ve I'm being very open. Like, right before the show, you didn't know this, but in my head, I let go mm -hmm. of all of my expectations of how the show is going to happen yeah. and what's going to happen. I'm just open for whatever needs to show up to show up. And that's, you know, an, one of my chapters about expectation versus intention. Mm -hmm. And so our intention is just to have fun. Yeah. And to have a conversation that touches someone's heart. We don't yeah. know who and in what way. Yeah, that will touch, move, and inspire people. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. All right, awesome. So is there any more to the process after well, we listen? Well, once you've gone through the, the listening, mm -hmm. then you can have a true conversation and come to a resolution. And it may be to say, I... You know, we agree to disagree. 
but at least you've both been heard. Because if one person walks away having not been heard, it's still not finished. And how many times have you carried those things around with you for years and years and years, wondering what just happened? Or, you know, you make up stories. Mm -hmm. You yep. make up stories which drain you, and I call it the... And we the, resent oh, and ourselves it's the, and others. Oh, it's the oh. air mattress with the pinholes sucking the energy out of you slowly <laughs> all, all those years. Yeah. And when you, I mean, I've, I actually uh, went to a woman that turned on me back uh, before many people were born here, but uh, in one of my first jobs. And I was bothered by that for 10 years. She was a manager. I didn't know what had happened to our relationship. Years later, I ran into her on the beach in Maui, and I thought, I can't take it anymore. I have mm. to know. I walked up to her and said, what happened to us? Mm. She wow. told me, and it was a complete misunderstanding. Mm. So you were called to complete. I had to complete. That. Uh -huh. And I think that that's a gift <clears throat> for everyone who's watching this is mm. to, I don't care if it was a relative 10 years ago, a, a boss, if you can complete it, Get a complete if it's still bothering you. Yeah. You need to be. If, if you're still thinking about yeah. it. Yeah. And is it true that um, it isn't necessary? I mean, it's, it's good if you can get in touch, if you can call them, if you can have a mm -hmm. cup of tea or a coffee, whatever, with mm -hmm. them. But it's not necessary for them to be there. You can complete stuff right. without, even, even if they passed away, you can complete stuff. I, I asked a, a client one time, I said, what will it take for you to be complete with this? Mm -hmm. Boy, she knew immediately. She said, I'm going to have a party. I'm going to burn this. I'm going to burn that. I'm going to do a dance. I'm going to watch the smoke. And I went, wow. I mean, all I had to do was ask, and she was complete. Yeah. Well, we have a kind of an interesting thing going on in our society. And the reason I'm saying that is because we have all these sports and all these things going on when there's always a winner and there's always a loser. Mm -hmm. and, and I think people are, a lot of people are so used to that. Uh, and, and, and I'm... You know, I am in a modality where I believe that we can set anything up so that it could be a win-win. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have to be a winner and a loser. Right. So in, in, in terms of, and, and I think conflict resolution does fit in, into that, right? Because yes. what we're going to end up with is something that all parties can live with. Right. So I know that you've done a lot of work in corporate America, and you used to work in corporate America as well, and so have I. So I want to just take something from my past for a minute and just use it as an example. So how many boardroom or conference room meetings have you been in where the president or the vice president is speaking, right? And he or she is talking about something, maybe the direction of the company, maybe the future of the company, and he's asking maybe something, he comes to something specific that he wants to know about from his staff, from his senior staff. And he asked the question, and there is silence. Mm -hmm. Nobody's talking. Right. Okay. But you and I both know that that question has been discussed with every member of the senior staff, and they all know what it is and what the answer is, but they won't say it. Mm -hmm. What is that? I think it's the fear of standing up and, and speaking out. It's the fear of everyone's going to look at them. There's just this place of, I don't want to be the first one to speak. They, they know what they want to say, but they won't do it. I think it's just a fear, uh -huh. and a fear of judgment. Yeah. So I don't know. You probably, you, you probably don't know about, about this, about me, but um, I grew up in a communist country in Hungary. Okay. And when I, was a, when I was a little kid, like 15 or 16, um, I decided that communism to me was a lie. Mm -hmm. Now, I would, have, I would do it differently, somewhat differently, if I, back then I knew what I know today, but I didn't. So... I always spoke up uh, in public how I disliked communism mm -hmm. and how I think they were lying to us and they were using us. They didn't like that. Matter of fact, they, sure they, they beat me up a lot <laughs> wow. every time I spoke up. So I made it up that if I speak up and if I express myself, it's going to hurt. Hmm. So guess how well I did <laughs> <laughs> with, with my public speaking career. <laughs> Not so well. <laughs> When I came to this country. But yeah. look at where I ended up. Yeah. Well, you, found, you found your voice again, and you, you yeah. found your safety yeah. Yeah. in I your voice. Yeah, finally, I finally have. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember the first time I spoke in front of a crowd, it was actually a speech that I prepared, and I prepared it over and over and over. I did it in front of the mirror. You know, I had it down. And 
when it was time to deliver it, not one word came out of my mouth. I couldn't get it out of me. Mm -hmm. And I wanted the, the floor to open up and I wanted to disappear. That's how embarrassing it was. But guess what? I lived through it. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up mm -hmm. is because if we're willing to go through these experiences, mm -hmm. and it's just like when, when I used to have horses, so I used to horseback ride, and when I got thrown off, my dad told me, you better get back up, because if you don't, you never will. Mm -hmm. So I think what our viewers, what we want our viewers to hear in this is when that conflict arises, is, is to not run away. Right, right. And I, I, I like you, I, we've all had that moment where we prepared something. And what I learned is what I prepared was what I call a should. This is what I should say. This is how it should be. Uh -huh. And I, when I speak now, mm -hmm. I have bullets, that's it. Because yeah. I'm going to speak from my heart and yeah, let it flow. It's and, to you. And yeah, yeah, if I've memorized something, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And it took me, you know. Awesome. Be, yeah. You know, you, you, you know what you want to say. If yeah. you just connect to your heart and let yeah. it let it out. Right, exactly. But, yeah. So I, I think people also wonder sometimes, so, so, so when this conflict arises with people, mm -hmm. you know, and you did say it's hard, it's not easy to stop and to, and to look inward, right? Because right. that's really what you're asking them to do is, right. to, is to stop and just to look to see what is this about? You know, is, it, is this really about me? And you said most of the time it's not. It, it's something, and is it then true, like something I heard in between the lines that you said, is it true then that we're really truly a reflection of each other? Sure. So sure. isn't it also true that when somebody gets upset with us, that it's a gift? Absolutely. And when we get upset at someone, it's a gift. We learn something. Yeah. We learn something every time. And I, I spent years making up stories mm -hmm. because I'd run and not find out, and I, I laugh at how often um, I was at a board meeting. How did you run, by the way? How, or what did that look like? Uh, so when you had a conflict, what, what were you doing? I was out the door. Or I just line? shut down and got quiet, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, which I, I'm sure that if my husband who's watching this would say, really? <laughs> 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 but um, I was at a board meeting for the Denver Bronco alumni. Mm -hmm. First time they ever, I was meeting with them to maybe work with them at the time. And some big guy walked in in the middle of my talk and said, excuse me, ma'am, we have limited time here. Could you get to the point? And I thought, oh, I've really mm -hmm. blown it. I'm a babbling idiot. They're, you know, I'm a dumb mm -hmm. blonde, whatever. I was just freaked out. Mm -hmm. And um, I spent three hours in victim mode after I got out of that meeting. And, you know, why doesn't he like me? What did I do? This is so over. I really blew it. You know, mm. you have these, I call it twisting in the wind. <laughs> Just mm. all these stories. Mm. And I called the gentleman that invited me and said, thanks for giving me an opportunity three hours later after crying. He mm. said, you know, the guys took a vote and we want you to speak to the entire alumni association in three weeks at Inverness. And I'm like, you're kidding me. Mm -hmm. And here came that big guy three weeks later that had cut me off. And mm -hmm. I had made up stories the whole time about why he didn't like me. Mm -hmm. And I was scared of him. Mm -hmm. And he comes running up, Sherry, Sherry, Sherry. And I was so scared that I had actually put a timer in my purse. And I said, you can cut me off today. And I handed him the timer. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, you know, um, I think it goes back to that, please like me, please like me. But um, uh, he said, no, I'm the president of the organization. I was late and I didn't know what was going on. How much energy had I wasted thinking wow. it was all about me? We think it's all about us. Wow. It had nothing to do with it. So how would you, just you know, to the benefit of the viewers, how would you handle that situation today? Afterwards, I would have said, help me understand what was going on there. You know, mm. uh, obviously you were irritated with me. And he would have said, no, I wasn't. But, you know, I didn't stick around. Mm. I just ran to my car and hid. Mm. So... Is stay yeah. and ask, or e even right then, ask. What's important for you to know? Uh, how much time do we have? You know, all of those things to just say, or someone's being a jerk, just say, wow, what's that about? <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it interesting? I, I find this to be so fascinating that we are trying to figure out what's going on in somebody's head. Yeah. That's really what we're trying to sure. do. And 
we have a hard enough time, I mean, at least I do, just to manage my own self, right. not alone somebody else. I, I have zero control over what's going on over there with you and 100% control over what's going on over here. And it's never what we think it is. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's ever been what I thought it was when I was trying to assume what, you know, I thought I was really smart for a long time about that. It was very humbling when I went through my coaches training to realize all my assumptions mm -hmm. were incorrect. I was stunned, embarrassed, and that taught me to ask more questions and to listen. I remember them asking a woman why she was doing such and such. And I literally wanted to raise my hand and say, I'll tell you why. <laughs> I was sure I knew why she was behaving the way she was. And I was wrong. Uh -huh. Wow. Shocking to me at that time. Wow. My ego had been so, let me tell you how. I know how. I know what's going on. I know what you're thinking. Let me finish my, your sentence for you. Great. And since you mentioned the name ego, um, such an interesting subject matter, um, let, let's spend a few more minutes on, on ego because... Um, I don't know. It's just what's coming to me right now is a lot of people um, have a hard time figuring out the difference between their true self mm -hmm. and their ego. So how, what could you, how could you advise us? You know, for me, it's about taking that moment of quiet and saying, I, dis I guess I describe ego as being in your head. Mm -hmm. It's up here. When you speak from your heart, it's your true self. Mm -hmm. So when you can just let go of all this judgment, fear, anger, all these emotions and just be for a minute mm -hmm. and say to yourself, what do I know from my heart to be true or what do I need to find out? Then it, it all goes aside. And I, I remember facilitating a meeting years ago. I really wasn't sure what was going to happen, but all these people were getting ready to sue one another. And I actually used the Indian, it was the Indian talking stick, but I had a hawk feather. And I said, mm. when you speak, only one person can talk, mm. and you have to speak from your heart, not from anger or fear. Mm. And as I watched everything fall away from these people, the, the misunderstandings and the questions that were being asked, and unbelievable, they walked out of that room hugging each other and saying, I love you. And I didn't expect it to be that good, mm. but they connected their hearts. And it was such a great lesson for all of us because I honestly wasn't sure what would happen. Well, yeah. So what I'm also hearing in that mm -hmm. is that when, when we connect it to our hearts is that we're telling our truth. Yes. Right? Absolutely. And uh, when we're telling our truth, magic happens. It does. Right? Absolutely. So th that, that just takes me to another place, which is truth, you know. Mm -hmm. there, there's so many people that talk about truth and... Um, when somebody tells me that there is only one truth, I usually run. Right. How do you? Well, because that's their truth. Yeah. <laughs> it might not be my truth. Yeah. So, so is there really a truth? Truth, like. I think it's all our truth within ourselves, and I think we all have different sets of values. We all have different belief mm -hmm. systems, and I don't think there is any one truth, except our truth to us. Mm. Well, there are certain truths, like the sun comes up in the morning. Sure, but it yeah. might not. <laughs> uh, until it doesn't, I mean, yeah, so right, far. Yeah, right, right, So far it has yeah. every morning, and yeah. it, then it goes down, right? Right. And then sometimes it rains. So there are some universal truths, right. I guess. Right, um, But in terms of, you know, and, and how do you find that people are able to express? What is this thing about expression that, that we having some difficulties and that's I think that's connected to conflict resolution mm -hmm. because if if we're not feeling what is that safety is it about right. safety yes yes I think that we have to keep we have to continue to ask questions we have made may have decided like you said this is my truth and so everybody should believe that mm -hmm. but if the person continues to say well tell me why you feel that way what is it about that look you know, and to be able to get them to articulate more and the other person to be actually open to asking the same questions. You now have a conversation. You may not change their belief system, but you have a greater understanding of why they feel that way. And that helps you let go of your judgment. But if they're just saying, this is the way it is, you're, like you said, you're like, okay, I'm out of here. 
But if you can have a greater, a deeper conversation to find out why they feel that way, how did they come to that, and then discuss it, that's a whole nother ball game. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So as I know human beings, and I'm trying to do less and less of this, but we size up people like within the first, what, three seconds? Mm -hmm. Based on what? On their body language, how, they how, how they're dressing, uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. Do you think that will ever change about humanity? Hmm. I, I, would, I would love what's to our think evolution? that it would. What's our evolution like? What's yeah. possible? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that it goes back to that word judgment. I don't mm -hmm. know. I think it's getting, we're becoming more and more aware of what judgment does to us and how mm -hmm. um, it tears people apart. It makes us unhappy. It makes the other person unhappy. I think there is a growing awareness Mm -hmm. We're not there yet. We're a long way from it, but I think we're further than we've been in a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that it's improving. I, I also believe that there are some unintended consequences of these devices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and that device and that device, because we all have one or two or three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I think people are less and less connected. You know, I don't know how many times we said connecting to your heart and connecting to yourself on the show so far. I'm sure we said it a whole bunch of times. Mm -hmm. But because of all these devices, people people would rather send somebody a text than to pick up the phone and actually have a conversation. Right. And boy, does that cause conflict? Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's misunderstood. Yeah, I hate, and that's it, why I uh, hate emails. I, I, I'm, you know, people are writing to me, and and then as they write to me, I read it, and I'm noticing myself that I am reading stuff into the email that isn't even there. Well, think about the conversation I had on you with, was it yesterday on the phone? Mm -hmm. Because you've been dealing with my PR and marketing firm this whole time. Right. And I thought, well, he must think I'm a real diva. So I called you and said, <laughs> I want you to know there's a real person here. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. because as far as I was concerned, you could have made those judgments already. And I said, I'm, I'm yeah, just a real I, person. I haven't. You I know, haven't, but, but it, you know, you could have. I've had divas on the shows. <laughs> and we still have a great conversation. Yeah. So, yeah, fantastic. So uh, we're kind of into the ha half time of the show, and I think, I think since you and I really haven't known each other long enough mm -hmm. to have any conflicts, I've been just kind of checking there to see if I can generate any and nothing is coming to me. So <laughs> let's just take the easier way out, which would be let's ask some of, the, some of our guests that are here in the studio with right. us if anybody would be willing to come up to the mic and share something that's going on in their life, and that could be in business or it could be personal, and, and see what's going on and see if we can shed some lights. If you could just say your first name, that would be great. Hi, my name's Jim. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome, Thank Jim. you. So what, well, do you want to just I, set it up first? Just no, I, I have more of a general question, I guess. Okay, great. Um, Sherry, if, you've, um, if you're talking to somebody and you're giving them advice about um, a situation, let's say uh, it's someone that has a, just a beef with a coworker and for whatever reason they just can't seem to get along, what kind of steps would they take to, to reach out and, and try to start those conversations? I think to, to go to them and actually say somewhere along the way it feels like our relationship is not working and you've lost your trust in me. Could you help me understand what's going on? You see, that's an open-hearted question and they're not expecting you. Typically, mm -hmm. that person you're not getting along with could be a bully, could be, you know, they're... They're just trying to be in control. And when you, with your open heart, come and say, I think we've lost our trust somewhere along the way, and I'd like us to, to be able to work better together and to both of us look good, it lets down their defenses. And now you can have a real conversation. What does is, what is not getting along look like? I'm just curious. Um, someone who doesn't want to seem to, to meet eye to eye or um, every Every time something comes up, it seems to be a, a, a public service announcement of this is the mistake that you made today, and you know, copying in ten different people on an email or um, not coming direct, not, not dealing directly, honestly, with that person. Yeah. So, so it truly is your responsibility to say, I really get that you seem to be upset with me, and I'd love you to talk to me about it and not everybody else and let's figure out how we can work better together and how we can be uh, more of a team and help each other look good 
you know, they, they want to look good. They like right. that, that you're in it with them too. And it's not just all about you looking good or you feeling more comfortable. You want, obviously they're uncomfortable. So how do you let them see that you can do this together? And, and that's just by literally saying, you know, what, what, what went wrong here? And how do we, how can we mend it? I'm curious too, is that when that kind of stuff goes on, I'm sure that it doesn't only going on with that one person, that it, it's going on with quite a few people. And I'm wondering, what does that cost to an organization? What's the cost? Oh, it destroys. It destroys organizations. I, I, I uh, am dealing with one of those right now. And I, I've got, actually, I've been given several clients that are all dealing with this, uh, a particular bully mm. who's been there for 30 years. And I said to Human Resources, why hasn't anything been done about this? <laughs> really? It's terrible. Mm. But it's happening at all in corporate America that it's rampant and it's very sad. Very, very sad. Hmm. But, but, you know, a bully will stop bullying if you actually come up to them and have a conversation. So how much, since you have a lot of corporate background, how, how much do you think, because I, I, I have a corporate background too, it's kind of interesting. When I did all these studies with corporations, mm -hmm. um, I did speak to senior management first, but then my next immediate step was to go out to the soldiers right. and, and figure out what's going on out there, what's, what's their perception of what's going on and what's off and what's wrong. And I wasn't really looking for their immediate supervisor. Mm -hmm. Who I was looking for is I was asking the question, when, when things are going on with you every day, who is it that you look up to mm -hmm. around you? Who it's a do great you, question. Yeah, who do you follow? And, and I found out that a lot of the times, it's not their direct supervisor. Right, right. And I think the sad part is so many people have been made supervisors and managers without any training. It's the, the Peter principle, as they call it. It mm -hmm. has occurred, and once they're given that power, they see it as a powerful position, and that to be a good manager, they have to, you know, <laughs> just right over these people and it, it just destroys all the you know the camaraderie the the teamwork that can happen when we're all in this together and I I've never forgotten the best manager I ever had who also ended up being the worst in the end but corporate gave the goals for the year to him and he brought us all in the room and said how are we going to get there and we lit up like Christmas trees because it was our company all of a sudden. We were being heard. Uh -huh. It was you ours. Oh, uh -huh. wow. We couldn't get, wait to get to work every day. Mm. It was so exciting. Mm. And then they decided to move our offices to another side of town. And the part that got left out is we now all had offices with doors. And we were going into cubicles. But no one told us that. Mm. And do you know that branch closed? <laughs> because... We were so devastated. We lost our joy in our job. We had no privacy anymore. If we had just been told, this is what's going to happen, how do you think it should look, and let's help design it. Mm. Uh, you know, it's all about this communication and bringing mm. everyone into what's happening so that they feel that they're being heard and they're part of the solution. So their mouth were talking in a certain direction, but their actions right. were not incongruence right. with what they were talking and about. And I don't think a lot of managers or supervisors understand how much talent they have in their organization working for them mm -hmm. because they've never asked. They've never asked, what do you like to do? What are you good at? How do you see yourself fitting here? And I mean, the, the, the managers that do have amazing results. But the ones that want to just say, here's the way it is, and we're doing it this way, and never find out what else is possible from their team hmm. are missing so much. And isn't it, isn't it funny when, well, it's not funny, actually, but <laughs> in terms of what's happening with the economy or what's been happening in the last few years, what corporations tend to do or what they're looking for to do is to save money, and, and they start cutting back, and they start, taking hours away and they're taking um, overtime away and they're doing those kind of things. Right. And they never think about that, what about empowering the people that work here? Yeah. And instead of having them work, what, what's the, I, I haven't seen any statistics lately, but what is it like, are people like 50% 
working at work and another 50 percent is it less they're disengaged i believe it was <clears throat> 80 85 percent are disengaged completely disengaged they're miserable they just did a there have been a couple of studies recently and I mean, if they want to save money, then ask the people, how can we save money? Yeah. <laughs> God, they're the people that know. <laughs> yeah. But they want to keep it up here. And, and uh, you know, we know best when you're not even doing the job. You don't know. And I have so many sad, sad people mm -hmm. that are saying, but they took away this, and this is what made it work so well. And nobody asked us. Hmm. So, yeah, he's already sat, sat down, so he must not have any more questions. Okay, so there's a lot of conflict that's going on uh, with our um, politicians, mm -hmm. would you say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we really going there today? <laughs> and, and, well, why not? <laughs> sure. Um, we could decide that we're afraid to go there and not no, go there, no, but no, we're not afraid true. to go there, are we? So I noticed when I was living back in, in Hungary in a communist country that what happened is that when a communist made a mistake, the way they covered it up is they promoted them. Is that going on over here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Oh, yeah. What do you I don't call know. that phenomenon? I, I wish I knew the answer what to that. What is that phenomenon? I wish I knew the answer to that. You know, they, they either promote them or they put them in another, you know, why they don't get rid of them, I don't understand, or find out why they behaved the way they did. But instead, they just either put them up here or sideways, and nothing's been solved. Nothing's been, you know, we don't know why this is happening. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. I, I think it's very sad. And that not only happening with the politicians, it's happening in corporate America all day long. Do you find that um, the government, for the last several years, are they getting more and more into our business? Yes. And, I'm trying and to develop it, a conflict with you. Is yeah. <laughs> it isn't going to happen. <laughs> Reli I, I religion, it, religion is where I'm going. I'm religion not going is, there. Religion is where I'm going next. If this doesn't work, <laughs> lightning's going to okay. strike me. <laughs> I, it, it just makes me sick that when I look at the the politicians, it is so ego driven, and it's not about what's best for the people. They're not even listening. You know, whether it's the to me, my personal mm -hmm. opinion is mm -hmm. it's. You want to get me, you want to get me started on ge their heart genetically to do genetically with it. modified foods? Ooh, yeah. you know. Oh, they, I have a whole series of shows that deals uh, with that. Yeah. Uh, so you know, they, it's whoever pays them the most money, mm. uh, is my opinion, and they're not listening to the people. Their egos are just running rampant, and it's a very sad state. So mathematically, I'm having some real difficulty with this. There are 380 million people in this country, right? And I'm not finding I'm saying things that I used to say when I was 16, okay? Mm -hmm. So maybe the federal government will come down on me. Who knows? i already been there, done that. <laughs> uh, it's familiar to me, familiar territory. But um, 380 million people, and how many people are in Washington that are running our country? Not that many. <laughs> <laughs> well, how how does this work? I don't know. Why are they not voting people out? I don't know. I, you know, my husband and I discuss this all the time. What? I think it's... People are reaching the tipping point more and more, but we're still not there. You know, we say, well, don't, don't reelect these people, and yet they do it again. And it's like, you're not happy, so why? You know, I don't think they're taking, they're so caught up in their own stuff that they're not taking the time to understand and to vote and to decide who might, you know, it, it, if we got rid of all the incumbents and just, you know, let the new people come in. They, it, something's got to change, but... The people are not acting. Mm -hmm. They're angry and they're giving a lot of lip service to it, but then when it comes time to vote, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Is that good enough? <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. So what what would you say? What what's the solution to this? Is it every individual human being needs to do we need to send everybody inward? I think that they need to go inward and they need to connect with what's right for them, not what somebody told them is right. And as we know, the political campaigns, the advertising is not telling the true story. Mm. And the general public, I think, just takes it for granted that that's the truth. Just like your doctor said, this is 
don't get me started on the medical community. <laughs> That'll get me going. But then but you, just brought up, you just brought that up, which took me through the smear campaigns. It's yeah. like, how can that be from our hearts? It's so it's far not. from our Again, hearts. Again, it's that ego-driven, I'm going to ego. beat you, I'm going to, mm -hmm. you know, let's get them. Instead of saying, you know, what they really, truly hope to accomplish and how, you know, why should there even be a smear campaign? Yes, I agree. There shouldn't be any. No. We shouldn't even allow it. It no. should be outlawed. No. And, and, and how much money is spent on that that could have fed the hungry, taken care of, you know, things that really need, people that really need this money. It, it just makes me sick. So does, does this mean that they think that we are that stupid, that we're going to make a choice based on who's going to be running this country or who the politicians are going to be uh, in office based on what are the bad things that they've done in their lives? Sure. Do you think that they really believe that? They seem to. It just keeps happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, what's in it's your just... closet that's going to determine yeah. if you're going to get I mean, don't we all have stuff in our closet? I mean, really, well, we anybody. I, yeah, I, we all I, I, couldn't, beings, yeah. I couldn't run for politics, yeah. <laughs> for political office. I couldn't either. Well, I wasn't born here, so I could only be yeah. a vice president. But, so. you know, it's about who that human being is now, and, and I just I don't understand it at all. It makes me crazy. Hmm. So I'm going to connect this to the, the, the common consciousness mm -hmm. of, of America because I think it's a reflection, don't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. And there, there's, it's whether people are saying, I want to be liked, I want to be accepted, and so I'm going to vote because you want to vote that way, so I'll do what, you know. There's this whole thing of, of please like me, please like me, and not stopping and say, who am I? Hmm. What do I like? What do I like? And I did it for years. I didn't even know yeah. I had values. I didn't know I could have values because I was an only child. I was adopted. And, you know, just please like me. I'll do anything you want. Please like me. Mm -hmm. And I realized I was selling my soul. Mm -hmm. I was, and, you know, then my pendulum was this way. And then it went, you know. You were available by, for anything. Oh, by, yeah. then it was, by God, you're going to hear my opinion whether you want to or not. Because mm -hmm. I'm so happy I finally have one. And then I realized, then I had to come back to center, which is the being place. Mm -hmm. Not everybody needs to hear my opinion. They didn't ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> that was another aha moment of, let me fix you. I'll tell you how to do it better, faster, quicker, and I know the best way. And we all do this in conversation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've done that. Did you do this? And did they ask for your opinion? No. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and so th that just brings me to, there are so many shows out there, talk shows, you know, like this one. And it's all about opinions, sharing opinions. And you mm -hmm. know what? I say, who cares? It's not about the opinions. Like, mm -hmm. I'm engaging people like you, and, and I think I mentioned this before, that in order for somebody like you to be on my show, mm -hmm. they had to be in their passion at least 10 years. Why? Why do you think that I is? Because I really know what's important yes. to me. Yes, yes. I'm not trying to please you or say what you mm -hmm. want on this show. I know what I because you connected that. to yourself right. and to your passion. And this right. is, if, if there's anything anybody got out of this show, you just said it. It's really about knowing who you are. We cannot really, I don't believe we can succeed in our lives to be joyful and to be, to be whole, mm -hmm. although we are all whole already. But in order to really have what we came here for, mm -hmm. I mean, why, do, why did you come here to this planet? What do you think the answer is? I know. Mm. <laughs> You want to know? My yeah. life purpose statement? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I was embarrassed by it. I went through this in a class. My life purpose statement is, I am an angel who's here to bring love and laughter to the world. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't uh -huh. want to accept that statement. I said, uh -huh. that's too big. Angel, woo, woo, too big, too big. But you know what? My heart and soul knows I am my happiest when I am empowering others to love and have laughter in their lives with themselves and to be able to look at themselves and embrace themselves and love themselves and not worry about what anybody else Let's thinks. Think. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So how long did that take you? I mean, that's a beautiful statement. Thank you for sharing that. How long did it take you to get to the point where you really didn't care anymore what people thought of you? I think I was probably in my mid-40s. Mm. And it's the most free time mm -hmm. of my life. It's I love it. And I want that. That's why I do what I do. I want that for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yes. To say, 
doesn't matter what you think of me. What, it, it, in fact, my beautiful husband is here today, and I remember when we met, and I said, you know what? I'm with you because I choose to be, not because I need you. And I love you very much, but if you're gone tomorrow, I will be fine because I finally love me more than I love you. And that's when I knew I was whole. Wow. So that there is really, the truth is, like my truth is that there is nothing out there that we can use. No shiny object. That shiny object could be a man, a woman, could be whatever. Right. A car, a house. There's no shiny object in there that could fulfill or fill a hole that we have created inside of us, is there? None. Only, only, only we, we can, can do, do it. it. And it's yeah. not really that hard, is it? No, it's, it's fun. It's oh. so fun when you realize that how someone else takes it, you have no control it's their over. Business. Yeah. It's their business. But you have what to you think of me is your business. Right. You have to speak <clears throat> your truth for yourself. Yeah. And when you know your values... I just did that and you didn't react. <laughs> <laughs> you just flew right over yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. When you know your values and you're uh -huh. honoring you, you're very, in a very comfortable place. Yeah. Yeah, I feel, I feel that from you. I really do. Yeah. Does anybody have... I, I want to make sure that there's no one else out there in the seats that want to express something that could potentially <laughs> uh, change someone's lives, including yours and mine and hers and everybody that's watching. Is that a toll order? <laughs> 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 Not really. Anything to share? Any questions? Awesome. Come on in. Ooh. Come my, on my, over. Come on down. Okay. Is my, that how you say My it? man. <laughs> <laughs> Just first name, please. Gordon. Hi, Gordon. I uh, have watched this young lady for over 25 years and grown with her and heard of some of her exploits. <laughs> and some of the, and I've come from corporate America for many, many years. And one of the things that always uh, impressed me and, and made me think twice was how she dealt with people in corporate America who were trying to get ahead trying to figure out how to make the next corporate move, how to, how to overcome the issues that they were finding were in their way. And while I never knew who these people were, she would share with me uh, some of the events that took place for them. And it was so compelling to becoming sensitive to what can happen, what's possible, if you just do some of the things she's asking you to do. And I was wondering if she might take a moment to share some of the stories she has about people who have come to her for help in getting ahead and some of the results that she's got from that. Okay, great. Okay. Well, thank you, dear. Um, I had a very powerful geophysicist who <clears throat> was trying to decide whether to retire, quit, very unhappy. Mm. And he had just gotten another 3% increase after 30 years. And he was world renowned. Mm. And I said, rather than quit, why don't you just say, what's possible here? What's going on? What's possible here? Because he, uh, he'd never what was asked. His he's never asked. What was he was trying to decide to what, because he was miserable and he was insulted mm. about these increases. Mm. But he'd never told, he'd gotten that something similar to these small increases for 25 years or more. Mm. And he was making more money than he thought he was worth? I'm not sure what he thought. Mm. Well, no, I think he thought that he wasn't making enough money, and oh. he also didn't feel respected. Oh, I see. But I said, why, how can they respect you if you don't respect you? Mm. So he asked what was possible, and he was given a very large cash bonus and a very large increase in pay and the ability to write his own um, job description. Mm. I said, gee, why'd you wait so long? Mm -hmm. When he asked? Wow. So he, was really, so he was really valuable. He was very them. valuable. Yeah. And another young lady who was furious, she'd been made an acting manager because her manager had quit. And for six months, she's still the acting manager. And I said, she said, I'm just furious with them. I said, do you think they have time to think about you? They have 30, 40 other people that they're putting out fires for and their own behind to cover. So... 
you need to ask for what you want. I had her write a memo giving them three dates that they could pick of when they could get together, an agenda of what she wanted to discuss, which was, you know, how, what do I need to be d done, uh, what needs to happen for me to be made the manager, and here's all the accomplishments, by the way, that have occurred since I took over as the acting manager. Mm. And I said, they are going to give you a very low amount and ask you to accept it as your pay, and you say, no, thank you, because they're going to lowball you. And she was immediately made the manager and given the money that she wanted. But she'd been mad for six months. Wow. You see, you have to just, it's just asking, what do we need to do here to make this so happen? So if you don't ask, you don't get it. You don't get it. But yeah. you're mad. You're mad at yeah. corporate America. You're mad at your boss. You're mad. Now you're t you've taken it home. You're mad at your husband. You're angry. And mm -hmm. you have no one to blame because you didn't respect yourself enough to ask for what you want. And I mm -hmm. love, that's another reason I love what I do because to watch these people spread their wings and they're terrified because to them that's conflict. I said it never had to be conflict, it's just a curious conversation. Wow. So I, I feel that one of the things that, um, I wanna check this out with you, that destroys corporate America is the politics. Mm -hmm. Again, we're back to politics, but corporate politics. And what I mean by that is people, right. people position themselves, you know, people wanna go up on the ladder right. and for some people, what that what that takes or what they think it takes is to step on others. Absolutely. <laughs> the boom, ladder, boom, boom, the boom. ladder are actually human beings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and for some, it's it's talking behind others' backs. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like a phenomenon, I think, in, in, in corporate America. How can that be transformed? Well, one thing that I've learned is the people that are doing that, one of their top values is security. And if they don't feel secure, they will step on anybody to get where they need to be. And it's about the people around them helping them feel safe. Mm. So Putting it's insecurity. Them, yeah, yeah. yeah. So how do you deal with those people? I would say, you know, Steve, I've got some ideas that I think can make us look great. We can make the team really work. I'd love to share them with you. How do you feel about that? And, or to say, Steve, you know, you've come in and you've done all these things, and these are the things I really liked, even though you may hate a lot of the things they've done, but you look for something you can compliment them on that is the truth, that is an honest statement about this is what I've seen you bring to the party, because they're not going to hear you otherwise because they're waiting to be told that they're not good enough and uh, that they're wrong. So mm -hmm. if you start out with, I've got some ideas, they're already la, so la, 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 la. acknowledging them for Yes, something. acknowledge yeah. them and then make it, a team effort and about making them look good. Mm -hmm. Because you still get what you want mm -hmm. when you're doing this together instead of fighting, fighting, fighting. And I had this happen. I, I was speaking and it was um, <clears throat> a blue and a white collar group. And these were some factory worker women that stood up sobbing. They'd been there for 25 years. They knew how things should happen. And a new boss came in and was just changing everything and they were devastated, just devastated. Mm. And so we went through that. What can you tell this person that they've done well and how can you make her look better? Mm. So she feels secure okay. and, it, and that worked. So I'm gonna use a, an actual example. It's yeah. just what's coming to me right now that yeah. I should be doing. Uh, it's not an actual example, I'm just gonna generate one. So you and I are working at the same place, mm -hmm. corporate America, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we're you're a manager, I'm a manager, and I'm, I'm sitting with you and I'm, I'm going, so um, here, here is what's going on. I want to get your input on something. So, Sherry, it, this is about my boss, but before I actually talk to you about this, I want you to promise me that you won't repeat this to anybody. Mm. What's your response? I'm going to say I think that you need to talk to your boss. <laughs> 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 you need to go to directly where the problem is. Otherwise, yeah. you're creating, um, even though I would be happy not to say anything, but this isn't my deal, and mm. this is between the two of you, and it's almost like starting gossip. Mm. I don't know what's going on, and you two need to have a conversation. Mm. If you need me to help mediate that conversation, fine, but this is between you. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a great response.
Otherwise, you've got people gossiping again <coughs> about, well, oh, did you hear about so-and-so? Did you, you know? <laughs> and now you've got all these unhappy people again when it might not even be true. So I have people come to me with this all the time. That's why it was easy for me to bring it up. So yeah. what I say, I mean, it's, you absolutely right on, but what I say, it's just a little bit different. What I say is that, so, so listen, I work with a lot of people, and everybody asks me these things. Okay, so guess what? I don't have the energy, nor do I have the time, to keep all these secrets, you know? After a while, it gets to be something that I cannot manage, and it's already there, it's right. past there. So if you don't want me to repeat this, then don't tell me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I, I actually had a woman that was, um, I, I also used to have a recruiting company, so I had a woman that was going on, uh, She'd been on five interviews with the company, and everyone had said, and now you get to interview with the bitch. <laughs> and she said, what do I do? What do I do? And I said, why would you be anyone except who you are? And how do you know she's a bitch? Wow. I said, she may be your new best friend. And you know what? She was. Wow, fantastic. I so guess what? Me. The conscious hour is over. Okay. And uh, what, what was it like for you? I loved it. Was it, was it an hour? It, no, 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 five minutes. Five minutes, exactly. So thank you so much, and I'm going to acknowledge you um, at the end of the show. Thank you. So you were fantastic. You were actually that angel that you were speaking about earlier, and you. and you are spreading the love, and thank you for, thank you for doing that, and I'm sure that you're changing uh, lives one at a time. Thank and you. we appreciate you being on the network and being on the show, and uh, for everybody else out there, if there is anything that we did here, uh, Sherry and I, and uh, people that have asked questions that touched, moved, and inspired you, please come to ConsciousEvolutionMedia.com and engage with us uh, on any page. You can just comment. You can ask questions. And keep coming back to the shows on Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Denver Standard Time. Thank you so much, and I love you all.